Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you how to grow beans in such a way that you can harvest them all summer long. Now beans really are a garden classic. They're one of the easiest vegetables to grow. They love the warm temperatures between 60 and 95-ish degrees or so and they go from seed to harvest in about six to eight weeks. So if you're a first-time gardener I highly recommend you starting with beans. The great thing about beans is you can grow them in containers, raised beds, or in-ground gardens. They're super versatile vegetable. So let's jump into the video. Now the first thing to do to help you to grow and harvest beans all summer long is to plant different varieties. There's basically two different types of beans, bush beans and polar runner beans. So first off, bush beans are great to grow if you don't have a lot of space. These here are Royal Burgundy bush beans. They're in my new raised bed kitchen garden seed collection. They are a beautiful purple bean. Not quite producing yet, but there are some teeny tiny little beans coming on. So these beans are perfect for a raised bed or a container, and they go from seed to harvest in about six to eight weeks. And they're a delicious bean to start with. Now the second type of beans to plant besides bush beans are pole beans or runner beans. Now pole and runner beans take a little bit longer to produce, more on the eight week end than the six week end like bush beans, but they do produce over a longer period of time. So if you plant both bush beans and pole beans, you'll have beans going for a lot of the summer. Now here at the base of this trellis here, I have some scarlet runner beans planted and they are beautiful. Look at the seeds of these scarlet runner beans. They're humongous seeds and they produce large plants which will grow up and over this trellis so it makes a nice little framework for the garden too. Now if you take a look at the flowers, they're beautiful red flowers and the bees and the hummingbirds absolutely love them. They produce tons and tons of super tasty tender beans. So you want to plant both bush beans and pole and runner beans in full on sun. You'll have tons of varieties in your beans that you grow all summer long. The second tip to grow beans so you can harvest them all summer long is to provide them with some support. Now pole and runner beans take up a lot of space. They can be 10 to 15 feet long, so they definitely need a really sturdy trellis. So an example here of a great inexpensive trellis is this ladder mesh trellis. Now ladder mesh costs about maybe around $5 for each piece. It's available in the masonry department of your local hardware store. Here we have actually a double trellis we have two pieces of ladder mesh secured with a T-post arched over the top. It really makes a fun garden arch for the beans to grow on. And they're fastened at the top here with cable ties and then on over to the other side with two more T-posts. And I actually planted some other beans at the bottom that aren't coming up yet. So a beautiful archway to grow your beans on. Now come on down here to the hill and I'll show you some other really easy DIY trellises that you can make. Here we have a sunflower stalk. Now this sunflower actually grew in my garden last summer. I just cut off all the dead sunflowers, left the stalk in the ground, and planted some beans at the base of the stalk. So you take advantage of all the natural parts of your garden. It makes it really fun, keeps it inexpensive. Here's some scarlet runner beans winding their way up the stalk. And the runner and the pole beans really have a great way of just attaching themselves to the trellis. This one here is actually a yard long bean, which I just have a little pole stuck in the ground and you can see it's just climbing its way on onto the top. Now the third really easy trellis for pole or runner beans is a simple teepee trellis. Now I love this particular trellis because it is made out of last year's sunflower stalks. Don't ever throw those sunflower stalks away. They have so much use in the garden. Now here I'm using them to trellis cucumbers, but it will work for any vining vegetables. And it works amazing for beans because you plant them at the bottom and they just grow up and form a nice little tent of beans. Plus it's an easy, inexpensive, free trellis to make. Now if you don't have sunflower stalks, you can also use tall bamboo poles. But for those pole and runner beans, make sure your poles are like 10 feet tall or so, so they have plenty of room to climb. The fourth trellis that's great for pole or runner beans is a garden arch made out of a cattle panel. You can grow a ton of beans on this. It's a really fun thing to have in your garden. And all the directions for making this are in my new book, The First Time Gardener, Raised Bed Gardening. And I do have some little beans planted here at the bottom, but unfortunately the squirrels and the birds have been picking them out. But if you wanna grow a ton of beans, definitely make a cattle panel garden arch for all your beans. 
Now bush beans don't need as big and tall of a trellis, but they definitely do need some support. Because if you don't give them support, what happens is they tend to fall over and snap when they get loaded down with beans, kind of like this one is right here. So we gotta tuck this one back up in the trellis. But you really only need a very light support. So here I have some bamboo poles. Got these at a local garden center that just kind of arch over. I've got three poles stuck here in Little Shorty. And then I have the sides here just wrapped with a nice thick twine. Just have it wrapped around twice and it makes a nice light trellis for your bush beans. So by providing your beans with a trellis or a support, you can grow a lot more all summer long. They'll be up off the ground and be a lot more productive for you. Tip number three for growing beans so you can harvest them all summer long, it's all about watering and feeding. Now if you don't keep your beans well watered, they won't produce flowers, which means they don't, won't produce beans. So do make sure you water them very, very well and don't let the soil dry out. The sec thing is all about feeding. Now beans don't need a ton of fertilizer, but when they start to flower, you do wanna give them a little feeding with a low nitrogen fertilizer. If you give them a fertilizer high in nitrogen, they're gonna produce a ton of leaves and not a ton of beans. Now these Royal of Burgundy bush beans are just starting to flower. I mean, these flowers, you guys, are absolutely beautiful. It's a perfect time to give your beans a little bit of a side dressing. So what I'm gonna feed them with is a nice handful of compost. Ooh, love how this smells. I made this compost right here in my own garden. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a couple of handfuls around the base of my bean plants. That's called a side dressing. I'll do this throughout Little Shorty here. And don't you guys just love Little Shorty? This three foot long raised bed is a smart pot. It's available over at CallieKimGardenAndHome.com. If you use the code watermelon from last week's watermelon video, you get 20% off all seed collections, Little Shorties, and my new book until Monday, May 23rd. So I've got a little handful of compost spread all around the bottom of my bean plants. And now what I'm gonna do is give them a nice dose of the Vermistera Vitality because it has a really nice natural growth hormone in it that will help the beans keep on producing. Keep them nice and healthy and help them from uh, getting diseases. So I'll put a little bit in my watering can here and give my beans a nice little soil drench. Tip number four for growing beans so you can harvest them all summer long is to stagger your plantings. And by that I mean you want to plant bean seeds every two to three weeks so you spread the harvest out all summer long. Now, you can start bean seeds indoors even before it's warm enough to grow them outside. Two to three weeks before your last frost date is good. Since I already have beans growing, I'm going to plant some brand new seeds right here in Little Shorty. So we'll have some to harvest after my first crop is done. Now here in Little Shorty, I've already installed a little support for my bush beans. This is really fun. I just trimmed some tree branches from the trees right behind me, cut them in about two foot lengths or so, and then wrap that twine around it. So it's gonna provide a really nice support for my beans here. Now I'm gonna plant three different varieties in Little Shorty. These are from my bean seed collection. I love having different colors, different types of beans in the garden, and you can really pack them into Little Shorty here. So the first kind I'm gonna plant are called dwarf Taylor bush beans. These are really fun, kind of purple speckled bean. And the nice thing about Little Shorty is, it's three foot long and each section is, to, is divided by this little divider here to help it stand upright. And it's kind of like using the square foot gardening method. We've got one foot of space here and I'm gonna drop nine bean seeds in each little section. So what I'm gonna do is just make nine holes with my finger We'll plant one variety in each little section of Little Shorty. And it's a method called the square foot gardening method. And it's a way to intensively plant your raised beds so you get lots and lots of production out of it. And I do have a really good um, succession planting chart, an intensive planting chart in my new book on raised bed gardening. So grab that for all the details. So I got my hole po holes poked here. I'm just covering up the bean seeds, planting them about an inch deep right along my drip irrigation line. And beans sprout so fast. And with nice warm temperatures, they'll be busting through the soil probably in about three to five days. In the middle section of Little Shorty, I'm gonna plant the Slenderette beans. These are a green bean, a little bit smaller of a variety. 
So perfect for the center section here. And do the same thing, poke nine holes and drop a bean in each hole. In the third section of Little Shorty, I have to plant more of the Royal Burgundy bush beans. These are from my raised bed kitchen garden seed collection. I love these beans. They're probably one of my favorites because they're purple. They are so beautiful and it's so much fun to plant color in the garden. You guys know the drill, nine holes, <laughs> drop a, a bean in each hole. And I actually sell Little Shorty with uh, my book and the Raised Bed Kitchen Garden as a kit. So when you grab the kits over on my website, not only do, are they already at a discounted price, but when you use the code watermelon, you get an additional 20% off. So it's a really great deal. And Little Shorties are so easy to just pop up, fill with soil, add some seeds and you have an instant garden. So we are just gonna water those bean seeds in because remember, we don't want our beans drying out or they won't flower, but we also wanna get the seeds off to a really good start here and let them settle in just a bit. Tip five for growing lots of beans so you can harvest them all summer long is mulch. Now, mulch is especially important for beans because they have really shallow roots and mulch helps protect the bean roots from getting overheated in the hot summer. So I'm just going to add a couple of inches here of mulch over the top of Little Shorty. I'll actually probably add more like an inch or so, just kind of a light little sprinkle until the beans poke through the soil and germinate. And then I'll add just a little bit more mulch to help protect the roots. And it also, of course, helps prevent water evaporation so you don't have to water it near as often if you use mulch. If you don't have shredded leaves, just grab yourself some shredded straw or a straw bale. Don't use hay though, because hay has weed seeds in it and you don't want weeds popping up all over your beans. Tip number six for making sure that you have lots of beans to eat all summer long is to harvest often. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any beans ready to harvest yet, but we'll definitely bring you along when they're ready. But here's a little clue that your beans are coming soon. Would you look at this beautiful purple flower? That's a sign that little teeny tiny beans are going to be popping out. Now, when your beans are ready to harvest, you want to check them daily. And you'll know they're ready when they're about pencil thickness. You want to harvest them young for the best flavor. As soon as the beans start to bulge in the pod, they're actually getting a little bit overripe. They'll start to get a little bit tough. But you want to harvest them by pulling them or cutting them right off the plant holding the plant in one hand and pulling the bean in the other so you don't snap the plant. The stems can tend to be a little bit um, fragile and you don't want to break your plant. But don't forget to check your plants daily once they start to produce because they grow very, very fast. And the cool thing about beans is the more you harvest, the more they produce. So you're going to have beans all summer long. Follow these six tips to grow and harvest beans all summer long, and let me know what type of beans you're growing in your garden this summer. Grab a bean seed collection, along with a copy of my new book, Raised Bed Gardening, and you gotta grab a little shorty, guys, so you have a really cute raised bed to grow in. Use that code WATERMELON for 20% off at calicumgardeninghome.com until Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.